one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode two of the Short Explanations podcast. My name is Hi. I'm Tom. Is there? I think he's there, but he's somewhere. Oh. Welcome, finally, after all these months, I think we're ready to actually start podcasting again in a more semi-regular manner. It's just been crazy, and I, I guess we should take the first few minutes to explain like all the website issues. Not really, but just different things that just like occur when when you try to build everything from scratch, and and we'll just jump right into it. So Tom can explain the details, but I don't know if we did the last episode, we did... Uh, we did a Hugo build, which I don't, I didn't know anything about. I didn't know anything about GitLab. I didn't know anything about how to host a podcast because before we were using WordPress, which was fine. We were, we were uploading to WordPress. We used some plugin that did something for us. And, but it, and we, and we've talked about this. It didn't do what, it, everything we wanted. Mainly we want to have multiple shows at some level and it wouldn't let us, uh, split it off. We lost control to the emails, to everything. So I couldn't go into iTunes and get metrics and do this and do that. Like it was just holding. And we keep on saying Tom had a major life event. So we decide, you know what, let's, let's stop there, burn it all to the ground, restart. And I think, I, I, th I think we're 90%. I'm not, I don't want to say we're a hundred percent, but we can actually start working now. You want to add to that? Yeah. Um, so the, the main issue um, is that the domain for in 30 is something that we just didn't control. Um, you know, it, through a long history that we're not really going to get into, um, you know, we were part of that network, but we weren't the owners of that network. Uh, and when we were kind of the only tenant, as you could call it, really the only people making content for the N30 network, we asked, you know, hey, can we buy this? Can we pay you for the domain? And um, the answer was just basically no, which is totally fine, right? We didn't have the original claim on it, so we figured, all right, might as well just make something ourselves because we weren't going to get the admin access to the domain that we needed to actually, you know, expand or change things or modify the hosting in any substantial ways. So we figured, eh, might as well burn it all to the ground uh, and just start something that we control from the bottom up. So now we've got our own domains and our own email provider. And now we're, we've got source code in GitLab and it pushes to DigitalOcean for a, a Hugo built site. Um, and then we've got DigitalOcean for like their CDN capability. It's not uploading podcast episodes and we're, we're getting pod track and like stuff pushed to iTunes. And like you said, I, I think 90% is, pretty good um took us a little bit to get it all organized but we're here now the the issue was and don't i i don't want to hear well whoever owned it before should have given it to you it's it's water under the bridge yeah. um yes we did not pay for hosting for 10 years so if you look at it that way yeah. we whatever that deal. is we got a really um, good deal yeah so so i'm not like like if you go there now, if you go to the old website now, it, it's there's ads everywhere and everything else. It, it it it's it's we made a good move, and the goal was, and you say, well, why don't you just pick pick some package deal? We could have, we absolutely could have, but we were afraid that this would happen again. So if we pick the big one and and something happens, we want to change something. We may be st we may be stuck. They may they may allow uh, exporting out and everything, but we just didn't want that. So if it took an extra few weeks, what's the big deal? And you're here now, and and everything else. But and so you heard a lot of this last time. But we actually have an episode today. We'll first start with uh, we have a signal group. You can join it. Message us. Uh, we do have we do have a Twitter account. It will be there. I will check it. I promise. We do have Mastodon. I mean, I, I think the InfoSec community has has coalesced around there. Uh, we have YouTube. You can watch these shows if you're a YouTube person. So there are ways to get a uh, get a hold of us. Also, our email will be at the bottom of the of what's it called of our of the podcast episodes, which again we didn't have. It was going to my personal email. Now we have an actual email. And we set up in the way that that if one of us leaves or one of us changes, the other person has everything associated with it, so we're never stuck. And that was always the goal. So 
So let's move on. And one of the great things you can say now is we're not beholden to a time limit, which was great for those whatever 15 years that I was podcasting to say 30 minutes was awesome. But now we're not beholden to it. We will still keep it short. We still will. We respect everyone's time, but we can now not have to worry about being so close. If we have a short episode, we have a short episode. And that's fine with me. So I think so. We've always said this. The very first thing before you embark on a journey is back up. So I would like to have our episode talking about backing up. And I don't know if this was our first episode last time, but I think that it's been so long that we should we should just go back and talk about backing up and what that means. And so I, I think I think Tom should start with this. Yeah. So, you know, backing up. I, I, I've been in this industry a long time. I have been a tech nerd for a very long time. Uh, I remember when backing up involved, you know, getting your tape drive and making sure you have your magnetic tape and you, you got to back it up and then make sure you rotate those tapes. And, you know, because they are physical objects that deteriorate, make sure you only keep it for so many years before you copy it over to new medium. And then like, you have to have two separate mediums, like hard drives and then a stack of DVDs. And like, it just... It's luckily not that complicated anymore, or maybe more complicated or differently complicated. Um, so, like, for the short explanations network, where do all of our, like, video overlay files go? And the logos and, like, PDFs of stuff. Like, where, where do we just put our files so we make sure that, hey, if Tom's computer just explodes overnight, we're not missing a bunch of stuff. Um, and... The laziest, easiest answer to that problem that we came up with is, oh, we'll just have a shared folder in Dropbox and shove everything in there. And, you know, if you know what you want backed up, if, if you have, you know, a collection of important documents that you can drag and drop onto some cloud storage that you trust, especially if you have free space, just use that. Uh, that's probably the easiest way is just use one of these cloud providers. And, and frankly, all the big ones are pretty much equal. You can use Dropbox, you can use OneDrive, you can use Google Drive, you can use iCloud. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. Just make sure that whatever account that you have, you know, put on two-factor authentication, make sure it's got a long, unique password. Uh, and the stuff that you want to make sure is safe, just shove it in that folder and wait. I mean, this this guidance has changed over the years, but essentially all these big cloud providers realize that with solid state drives, the, the storage space coming down to give you that performance, uh, they couldn't, you couldn't have a duplicate in the cloud and on your computer. So they all learned what files to make available to you and what files should be on the cloud. And you can have that. You can say, you know what, this is... This, this stuff is backup, so put it on the cloud. I don't need it here, and I'll just download it because now we have faster internet. And that was always a thing. They're, they're saying, oh, we can back up more of your computer. And the answer is, yeah, now they can. You could say, you know what? This folder should just live on the cloud. It, it, make a conduit or a screen just so I can see the folder. If I need it, I can download it. Uh, all of them are smart enough to realize through cache which one's important, which one's not. And then after you don't use it for six months or whatever, it goes back to cloud only. And there are settings for that and what to sync and how to sync it. And a lot of them will do local sync. So if you have multiple uh, multiple computers on your house, they'll use land-based syncing. Like they, they really did a good job. And and the, the thing I will add with these cloud providers is I, when we talk about encryption, I wouldn't consider them full-blown trust no one encryption. However... That's that's going to be the next step. You backed up everything. You have you have everything. Now I do want to say the old hard drive in the back of the computer method, just real fast. Um, both Windows and Mac and probably Linux through rsync have something where you buy some sort of removable disk. You stick it in the back and you turn on backup, and that is fine. That may cost you a hundred dollars. You have it, and that's great. Um, with all these cloud services. For the most part, the free tier may be good enough for you. I'm not going to go as far as saying all this other stuff. The free tier may not be bad, but if you're going to do a whole family, you might as well pick one that you like and pay for it. Just spend the money. You got to spend it somehow. And you may say, well, $100 a year is too much. Maybe it is, but those are the priorities you have to sit there and think about, and you can find them. 
And if if you're only backing up a small collection of documents, the free tiers might be just everything you need. Um, and if if you wanted to do something like whole disk backup, right? Either um, Time Machine for Apple devices, or you know, like iOS backs itself up near constantly, so you don't really have to worry about that too much. Um, Android phones do a lot of the same similar always backup stuff to a Google account. Um, you know, Windows has its own backup manager built into it. It's pretty generically named. Just type backup into your start menu. It'll pop up. Uh, for Linux systems, especially if you're more technical or you wanted to script something, uh, I highly recommend Restic. R-E-S-T-I-C, I think. I'm, I'm going to check that live on the air. Um, yes. Uh, R-E-S-T-I-C. Restic is a fantastic free and open source product to do backups. And it does have the ability to do, by default, end-to-end -end encrypted backups. So if you would like to take all those backups, make sure you encrypt it with a super strong passphrase that you control and shove it up to cloud storage and make sure it's safe from prying eyes, you can absolutely do that. Um, so that's fantastic. But most people, I, I would argue today that most people probably don't need full disk backup. They just need a collection of, you know, important documents or photos, just a place where they can shove data. Um, if you wanted to get a little bit more fancy, let's say you wanted something like with file sync, but you don't necessarily want to like pay for a cloud service or you don't want to trust a cloud service. Sync thing is magical. Sync thing, you install it on one or more computers or Android phones or other devices or even like cloud servers. I've got a cloud server that I sync to with sync thing. And it creates basically this mesh network with Dropbox-like fun functionality. You can select one or multiple different shares, each with um, like different encryption settings, including end-to-end -end encryption settings now. Um, you know, different like, hey, keep this one offline, make sure that you keep this many copies, make sure there's this type of version history. You can get really crazy with sync thing, or you can get really simple and say, hey, here's the five machines I have, here's one folder, just make sure this stuff is everywhere. Um, and it's wonderful. Sync thing is honestly one of my favorite programs and I install it on every new computer I have. The one problem, not with necessarily with sync thing, but with the idea of mesh networking with these backups is where does, when you delete from one, where does it delete from? I always had this problem because I back up to the Synology and if I delete from my local machine, like, so I set it up to pick up the Dropbox and the Google Drive and the OneDrive and all back up there. But if I delete from one, does it, where does it delete from? And that I don't know. And that's hard to, that's hard to figure out. It's, uh, it's an option. So in sync thing, you can say, hey, only add files here. If you do not replicate deletes. So if you delete it locally, it's not gonna delete it on the other side. Um, like you can actually control that behavior pretty granularly. It will get confusing and you can confuse yourself if you toggle too many of these things on at once. Because I mean, you have to think about the interactions of all of these different things. But with sync thing, you can say, hey, delete things, but keep version history for six months. So if you delete something, after six months, sync thing will run and it'll be like, okay, cool. We can clean up these old files. It's been longer than six months since they were deleted and it gets rid of them. Um, or you can say, hey, make sure to keep like the past five versions. So in, in the event that something you know, gets corrupted or you overwrite something or just something happens to your data, um, you can go through sync thing and actually pull it back. Now, this is not, sync thing will not guard against something like CryptoLocker. Sync Thing's version history is literally taking a copy of the file, timestamping it, and putting it in another folder. That's it. So if you get with, hit with some like crypto ransomware or something terrible like that, guess what? That backup version history folder gets encrypted with everything else. Now, other cloud-based storage providers that do have version history, those are immutable copies, which means that you know they if even if your stuff gets encrypted locally, 
The most recent version is going to be pushed up. The most recent locked up version is going to be pushed up to whatever cloud service provider you have, but their backup copies are not going to be affected. So you can roll back usually. Well, it's, it's yeah, I was going to say, the you have to worry about ransomware now and sticking something into the back of your computer is probably not the right answer. Um, moving to so, some cloud-based thing will have that version control that that gives you that extra peace of mind. I will say, if you purchase uh, Microsoft Office, Office 365, you get OneDrive built in with that. And we've talked on the, the old show, OneDrive is awesome. If you don't really care, OneDrive is awesome. If I'm not a fan of Google Drive. It's not that it's bad. It's, I, it's OneDrive was so much better. And my wife is a big fan of Dropbox and I've gotten other people on Dropbox. So for me, I'm now in between, like, I don't know where to put stuff, but I need to find one spot and I'll end up having to pick one. But, but any of those are really good. iCloud is good. You're going to end up having to pay for one. So maybe you figure out your workflow. You have, you had this week off, uh, your fo- if you're using I- iCloud and you're on Macs, maybe iCloud's the way to go. Maybe you say, I just want to complete third party and you pick Dropbox. Uh, if, or you say, you know what? My kids are on Google. They use Chromebooks at school. I'm okay with that. Maybe you just go that way. But the good news is over the last whatever X number of years, the number of s- files you actually had to back up has gotten so small that, that I- I'm-, I'm just thinking about it. your pictures. But think about what your pictures are. Your pictures are backed up on your phone. If they're backed up in many different ways, you can say, you can tell it to back up to iCloud, to Google, uh, to Google Photos, to Amazon Photos, to any other thing. It's also backed up to your respective devices backup. And, and your, your significant, your, the people that you share it with also have it. So I would say, you know what, I would still like another backup somewhere else, whether that's locally or some, or, or through a cloud provider, but still you have those backups, your music. I don't know anyone who listens to downloaded music anymore. And we know that there are people, I, I, I get it, but even I was probably one of the last holdouts and I'm now all, all, uh, Spotify. I'm actually on Google music and, and I'm trying to think of anything else. Your documents for school, if you start your file, I mean, those are the ones you have to back up. Your tax files, the actual file, not the application. And I think that's it. I mean, it's Even the stuff taxes. that you create. Like if, if you're what? using if you're using TurboTax or something, I, I can log into my TurboTax account and just go back, you know, a decade or more at this point. So there are even with like financial documents, most of that stuff is digitally born anyway, right? Most of that stuff exists just on the web by default. So it's not your job to back that up. It's whatever financial institution you use as job. Which reminds me, we are at the end of the year. My wife's about to ask me to download all my uh, brokerage statements because, sh- because again, you're, you're reliant on them. And I know s- companies like Amex has a one year look back. So if you download it in January, you can't get the November one from the previous year. You have to ask them and pick and asking someone via email or on the phone is something I don't like to do. Um, so I much rather just be able to click one click download and do that. In fact, I should write a script that says, I want you to download everything on this page and put it in a folder. But but again, it's like you said, all these companies now are are designing these things to be online for you to get. And do you really need your 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 uh, power bill from the last 12 months? It's already there. Your paychecks are with your company. Now you have to trust that the company doesn't leave or fire you or lock you out, which is a different issue. But the, the sense of how much storage space do I need? Just remember, they are in a lot of other spaces. Probably your medical records at this point are also probably, hopefully, in, done right through HIPAA, but they are they are probably online somewhere as well. So, like one one of the downsides to things being, you know, uh, cloud everything or or cloud native, uh, is that guess what? Your data is no longer in your direct control, and as scary as that is. It also has a lot of benefits. We we don't have to worry about, you know, 
backing up our tax documents. I, I remember like way back in the day, right? When when TurboTax, you bought a boxed copy at your, your local Comp USA or Circuit City. I'm going to intentionally date myself there. But like, you know, all the, the worksheets and the show your work and all the, the government forms, like I remember just folders of stuff that I had to manage and make sure it was backed up. And now, yeah, sure, Intuit holds that stuff and they could get hacked and leak all my information, but I also don't have to worry about backing it up. Now, you might say that's a poor trade-off and that's fine. I think that's a that's a fine angle and a fine opinion to take. But we can't deny the convenience of not having to worry about it. Look, if you want to do a trust no one, full on crazy backup, we can do that. Leave a comment, email us. We can go. We can go down that rabbit hole. The problem is, you go down the rabbit hole. You go down the rabbit hole. It's it's it, you. You either have to do it the right way, or everything else is wrong. And and unfortunately, so this is your risk factor, and you're going to hear a lot of this. What is your risk factor? Who is your threat? What's your threat model? I'm just trying to keep stuff there. I would I like it encrypted? I would like as good of an encryption as I can get without having to necessarily manage my keys when it comes to like the photos of my kids or some documents. Now, now we're not talking about your super sensitive documents. There's other ways to do that. Put them on a USB key, keep them in your house, put them in your safe deposit box download an encryption software scheme and do that. And, but we're talking about just in general backup. And then I do want to leave us and I, we have to say this, the three, two, one rule, which still applies. So three, you want three backups of everything. So if, what is it? Uh, two is one, one is none. So you want three copies of everything. Okay. That could be the one you're currently using and then two and two other places. All right. You want, so you want three backups, two different mediums. So we talk about the cloud, but you should have something like offline, some some other form, either a hard disk drive or whatever. And then one of those backups has to be, we used to say 50 miles from you, but it's in a different location. Um, I mean, the entire West Coast, the entire West Coast was just blanketed with snow and so was the East Coast. I don't think anywhere in the United States was safe in the last week. So, but again, now, so our recommendation probably is have your cloud provider, whatever that is. And then if you can afford a hundred dollar hard drive or a thumb drive with your really important documents, put that in and, and just set it to be automated. I have my hundred dollar uh, hard drive sitting in the back, my portable one that I do, and that's it. And, and yes, you're spending money to hope to never use this stuff, but that's what it is. I can tell you, right, my, my Restic backup folder on, on my cloud storage provider of choice is expensive to maintain. But I also, uh, just, just recently, in the past couple months, went to go turn on my Linux laptop. It's dead. It's dead, dead. Now, of course, I can I grab my screwdriver and pull out the hard drives and do some recovery. I'm sure that the storage is fine. It's just... Uh, probably some issue in the motherboard. It, it was deep enough that I couldn't diagnose it with the tools I had while I was mobile. Um, but when these things fail, it's not going to give you a warning, right? Like back when old spinning metal hard drives were going out, you could feel it. It was getting sluggish. You would get really long load times. Maybe Windows would fail to boot a couple times, but it would eventually come back up. With solid state drives, when they die, they're gone, man. Like they are dead, dead, and it will be instantaneous. So yes, backups can be expensive to maintain. It can be really annoying, but with modern hardware the way it is, we do trade a whole lot of speed uh, for that kind of safety net of, oh, this is gonna warn me when things are gonna go sideways. You're not gonna get that kind of warning anymore. So it pays to be prepared. And oh yeah, so I needed some of those files on that so I could resurrect it on a different machine. Yeah, I just went to Restic, pulled it. It was kind of annoying. Took a couple hours to download the backups and decrypt everything, but you know what? All my stuff was there. I literally lost like three days worth of data and that was just like cache files and temp stuff that had changed. Nothing really important. I want to end with, if you're a little more advanced than just cloud storage, uh, I wanted to talk about a NAS system. So 
and so what i have so if if you want to get into the weeds just a little bit this is this is as consumer as they get you can buy i have a synology system but it doesn't matter what it is you can you can go buy a mac mini and load it up with hard drives you could buy a cheap windows computer uh and load them up and share them on the network but i have a synology drive i it's four bays i put four two terabyte hard drives in so if one dies i have it it's it's done natively to the Synology on three of them. It's plug and play. It's some management on a web interface, but everyone has a local drive. It comes with apps. Uh, it comes with apps. It comes with Plex. It can come with, with their own photos, their own whatever. I look at it as a, a central repository for everyone to throw their stuff that, that they don't want on the computer. So... And one of the apps that it comes with is backup from, from Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, Azure. Like, it's like 30 different things. S3, and it was just, wow, I didn't know that there were so many. And that's what I have. And every month I get a report. It does take some management, but it, it adds to that step of, of, you can, of learning more about how hard drives work and how to set up some sort of backup. But you really have to want to do that. I did this 10, 10 years ago and then I re-upped it five years ago. And I feel like when this dies, I either go solid state and go down the rabbit hole again, put solid state drives in there, or I just I just up my my whatever cloud subscription to be more data and be done with it. Because I think that's where we're going. And and but if that's a job you want, that's that's a nice fun weekend project. It will cost you some money, not a lot. The, the 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 box is like two three hundred dollars and each hard drive is whatever you want it to be and you can go from there and uh you know just just in case you are new to this network or i know we haven't done the show in a while um part of what we do part of our our main goal for this show um is to be a tech show for regular people um you can get crazy if you want to write your own backup system and do some bash scripting around restic and go nuts with with sync thing like i did cool jump into the signal group let's let's talk about it because i i love talking about this stuff um but if if i want to make sure that like my aunt and uncle have a really solid system to just make sure that you know the photos the family photos they took over christmas don't just disappear one day that's the stuff we're going to talk about the most and that's the stuff we're going to recommend it's kind of the the average user use case um because when it comes to tech shows I, there it seems like yeah it, it either has to be like super propeller head stuff or like brain dead stuff and we kind of want to shoot somewhere in the middle there aren't that many security shows we want to focus on the security and like I said, the very first, if you talk to anyone in security, the first thing they do is talk about backup. But I think we have six or seven years worth of stuff that the like passwords and VPNs and things like that, that we just want to, now it's been a long time and to resurrect them is a good idea. And then we want to intertwine the news. I mean, there, there's a lot of news stories that we want to cover. We just want to make sure there's a lot of research done. So we do give you that factual information. So again, we started with backing up. You have a couple of days left. I'm hoping you have, you had a good week off. Let's start the new year, put everything up, pick something, pick something, take the free tier, start figuring out what files you want to back up and take the approach. What happens if my computer dies right now? And those are the files that you're going to want and start compiling them. If that's part of your new year's resolution to be more organized, go for it. And if you have paper documents, scanners are really cheap. Get a scanner. They have that right software that will take. You know what? Your phone will do it. Like literally, your phone has has document scanning features. You just take it. Just start throwing them in folders and deal with the organization later. But just get them on in case you do it. In case you decide to do it. And then when you're ready to figure out an actual solution, hop in the Signal Group. We'll talk to you. But again, for ninety percent of the people, a cloud backup uh, solution is probably your right answer, and you will be happy. It's not that expensive, especially if you have it in a family setting. So with that said, I got nothing else. So that's all I've got here. And hey, okay. we're, we're no longer the in 30 network, but man, we got close to that 30 minute mark. Oh, did we? I didn't even look. I took <laughs> off the timer. We are at 29.25. We are right on time. Wow. Okay. Well, 
everyone have a good night and we will see you hopefully next week i i think we can do a lot of weekly shows mm -hmm. for the foreseeable future so please subscribe and we will see you next week see you everyone <laughs>